How's it going, people? I hope your new year has started off well, at least better than mine. Mine's been shit so far. <coughs> yeah, I'm making my first video of the year on an untried computer because my other one, the one I've been using for the past 12 years on YouTube, not that anyone noticed, seems to have taken a crap on me. Oh, and uh, fell down the stairs last month and broke my damn leg. So, yeah, I'm not... I'm not a happy guy right now, but I'm still optimistic because, I don't know, maybe I'm just dumb. But anyway, I have been looking for something to do, you know, video-wise, because I'm, I'm not very active on YouTube, probably why I'm not very successful either. Of course, I don't care. That helps. This is also just a test of this computer because I can't find a jack for the microphone. It must be a USB mic that's required or something. But anyway, this is a test because, I mean, I'm using the computer's microphone and I'm going to be playing a video that I'm going to react to on the same computer while filming. I don't know if I can actually pull that off on this one. Here it goes. Anyway. Um, to preface, um, last month, um, someone put a video up on, uh, on Twitter about, a another NDE claim, and that's my meat. You know, I've already responded to, like, well, two NDE claims, and I didn't like either one of those guys. Yeah, there was, um, oh God, uh, Howard Storm, scumbag. And some guy named Marcus who goes by the name Messiah, and he's a lying SOB. I got both of those videos uh, in my retinue. I think there's actually a playlist. I might add this to it. I might put the links to those videos in the description here if I successfully do this. Um, anyhow, let's check out this NDE claim. And this is your host, time. Dorothy Shelton. Today you're going to listen to the beautiful near-death experience of Jane Thompson. Well, I can already tell that uh, Dorothy is very unbiased. It's beautiful. And it's definitely an NDE. And I'll agree. It is an NDE. I have watched this once before. This isn't a cold reaction. Um, it's near-death experience. All right. Yeah, if you didn't die, but you almost died. That's a near-death experience. It's not a died and came back to life experience. It's not a resurrection experience. I would call this one a nearly died experience, but let's go on. During her near-death experience, she learned many lessons. Lessons <laughs> about oneness, healing, our soul's purpose, and ultimately how to live a fuller life. She also learned that death is nothing to fear, and only the next step in our evolution as souls. Evolution? There's a biological component to the soul. I guess there would have to be, wouldn't there? Because if consciousness is just in the brain, you get Alzheimer's, you're a dead man, dead person walking. I mean, death of personality, death of self. I guess the soul's kind of a backup drive, maybe? Or maybe the real thing. I, I don't really believe any of this shit, but I mean, it's interesting, and I'm happy to listen. Let's go. Cool. My NDE happened on August 22nd, 2008, at 1.20 p.m. I had just turned 34 years old, and I woke up early that morning in an unbelievable amount of pain. And I was burning up from a very high fever. I could barely move. I was in so much pain. But I was able to reach for the phone to call a family member to be taken to the emergency room. I was in and out of consciousness, but I was still in my body. I hadn't had my NDE at that point yet. I had just come out of having a CT scan and I was 
taken to a part of the emergency room where they closed the curtains off so we could wait for the results and see what was next. I was in a tremendous amount of pain, and I had been for several hours at this point. I was taken into the emergency room at about 7.30 a.m. that morning, so I had been through a lot. The pain was increasing. My fever was getting worse, and I was very weakened from being in so much pain for so long. And so as I was lying there on the hospital gurney with my eyes closed, I began convulsing. And my head had so much pressure in it, I could feel the veins popping out. I felt like my head was going to explode from all of the pressure. And right when I knew I couldn't take any more, I went very internal. I get that one. That's a, that's a necessary survival uh, trait. Uh, I've done that. I've gone internal. Uh, I fell down the back steps slipping on the ice. And I broke my damn leg and was wondering why it wasn't hurting. I mean, it, I mean, it hurt. But, I mean, it's like it seemed to stop hurting. And I went internal. And then... I'm back in my house in my lazy boy, holding my leg up, you know, holding by the knee, checking out my ankle. I didn't know it at the time, but I broke my fibula. And uh, <sighs> anyhow, I mean, it was just ballooning up and everything, but it's really weird because the pain would be unbearable and I couldn't take any more. And then I go internal and fade it out again. Maybe nothing to do with this, but I'm just chiming in. I've had some, I've had experiences, and I tried to be spiritual. Thought I was in the past. But I think I should talk about that. I don't talk about myself much. Um, I feel like it now. Anyway, let's let her talk. I disconnected completely from the external world, from everyone that was around me, from everything that was outside of my body. She kind of went down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Go to a lucid dream, the kind you don't want to wake up from. I get it. Or the kind you actually... Look, I used to suffer from sleep paralysis. She talks about the convulsion. I wasn't having convulsions, but it felt like my whole body was shaking. And stiff as a board, couldn't move. With lights flashing all over it. Bright lights flashing in a darkened room. Sinister feeling of being watched and judged, even. And maybe hungered after. It was really scary. And I, my brother-in-law talked about a demon sitting on his chest. He couldn't move and he was shaking. But he wasn't shaking because my sister didn't notice. And I mean, I was with somebody and she didn't notice either that I was shaking. So it was just me. Um, might be different. But anyway, yeah, I, I used to have sleep paralysis, old hag. My brother-in-law, he prayed his away. Me, I went into a lucid dream and I was convinced for a while that it might have been an astral projection, an out-of-body experience, except while there was a lot of compelling things that happened, most of it was surreal and obviously not logical. Uh, timelines and things and stuff, so it was mixed. It wasn't here. I wasn't really doing it. Too bad. That would have been cool. Anyway, I don't want to interrupt her, but she said she was going into convulsions. She might have been. But it's my experience that sometimes you think you're shaking and you're not. Sleep paralysis, well, this wise. Might be different with her. I don't know if they gave her a shot. You know, maybe she's going, she's in and out of consciousness. In a lot of pain. Shades of Howard Storm. Different destination. Better person. It's fine. I thought to myself, I'm dying. I've had that thought many times. And I've almost done it. Well at least a few times, almost drowned as a kid, had to be pulled out from underneath an undertow and a log. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know if that was actually near death. It, I mean, I had, I was coughing up a lot of water and it was surreal and time slowed down. Another time I drove off a guardrail on a stormy night and, um, yeah. Went off, bounced around, couldn't get control, 
launched off this railing into the darkness, stormy darkness. And I didn't know how far down the ground was. How far I was going to fall in my car. And I thought, it was weird. I had time to think about stuff and, and, and inspect things. And I was calmly thinking, oh, I'm going to die. I should pay attention to this. This is important. Or not, but I should pay attention to it anyway. Nothing you can do about it. We as well go with it. Anyway, I didn't, though. I didn't, I didn't really get hurt. It's amazing. I mean, rolled and rolled. I mean, it was down a ways, but it was on a slope. But I came out of that with some bruises and a few scratches. And, you know, maybe a little uh, post-traumatic stress. And the lack of a car. You know. And, um, well, anyway, there's another time I don't want to talk about. All right. This is what it feels like to die. And I wasn't scared. It was just a very matter of fact knowing. And right at that moment, I popped out of my body. I was no longer attached to my body. And the pain was completely gone. I was so detached that I then noticed that I was up on the ceiling of the room. All right, that one happened to me, too. Although, the funny thing is, in my dream, I couldn't control myself. No gravity? For some reason, I didn't go through the ceiling. Now. I was immaterial. But I'd be like, walking along upside down, Spider-Man style, kind of, except bobbing. Trying to get myself to turn around so I could see who's below me. I'm looking around, crane my neck, and I'm seeing it's daylight when it shouldn't be. Seeing people I went to school with, uh, same age. As far as I know, they weren't dead. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a dream. But yeah, I remember that. I fly, but I couldn't control myself. Besides, I have a fear of heights, so probably didn't help. Kind of like that Greatest American Hero TV show, you know? It'd be a shitty super bad. That I was in, and I was looking down at the scene below me, and I could see my body lying there on the gurney, but I could see that I my essence was no longer a part of that body, that it was just the shell of who I am. I saw the people around me scurrying around. I felt their various emotions of being frightened, being bewildered, wondering what was happening. All right, that's Shades of Marcus, my second video. Except, I don't see bullshit. He probably dreams of it, though. Moving into action, assessing. And I just looked at this strictly from an observer's perspective. I was just noticing and almost taking note. Yeah, and yet she doesn't get much, give us much detail. Maybe she was paying attention, but then forgot some of it as she's going back into her limited brain or something. But I'd love to have gotten some details. More details of the afterlife, please. What was going on? And I started floating up and I saw these little balls of light energy hanging around and bouncing around and those were the souls of everybody that was in the hospital that's shades of a it's an old movie from the 70s so bad it's good called Greaser's Palace and this guy keeps getting killed and getting resurrected and you know, I was in a rainbow and there was full of babies, and they were swimming, and they were naked, and then I just turned into a big, great big smile. Yeah, little balls of light. That's, that's nice. That's pretty, actually. Yeah. I don't mind. You know, use your illusion. That's fine. And I saw how each ball of white light, how each soul was connected by a thin, iridescent line. And that's oneness and the way that we're all connected. Kind of homo gestalt out of like Theodore Sturgeon. And then that's when everything started to speed up. And I felt myself very quickly going into the tunnel. I felt like I was on a roller coaster because it was fast and you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it's exhilarating and it was exciting and almost joyful in a sense of oh I wonder where this is taking me and the tunnel ride was very brief and then I immediately dropped out of the tunnel into the white light and the tunnel was very dark very black inside so then to be suddenly
finally in this bright, beautiful white light. It took me a moment to adjust to it. And after I had a moment to adjust. Like you have, you know, retinas and all that. I mean, why would a spirit body need to adjust? Spirit eyes. I mean, I mean, they're, I guess, I mean, aren't they without limit now? Probably seeing colors that you couldn't see before. Although, most of my experiences were monochromatic in it. Probably because I like old movies. The very next thing that I felt was a tremendous amount of love. <clears throat> love could even... I get emotional even talking about it today. It was the most pure, unconditional love. Well, you know, you might have felt that. That might have even been real. Maybe it was a divine Brahma, for all we know. But it sure doesn't sound like the God, the Abrahamic God. I mean, unless he's got many aspects like Brahma, and one of them is nurturing and loving. But I, anyway. I've ever experienced Wait. in my life, you know, it was love for me that no matter what I had ever done in my life, what I had ever been through, it was just pure and unconditional love for me. The closest I've ever come to that feeling of love on earth is when my daughter was first born and I had her after my NDE. The first time she was handed to me and the first time that I held her, I remember looking in her eyes and she was looking in my eyes and that love that I felt for her and that I could feel that she felt for me, that her soul could feel for me. It was very pure and it was very unconditional. You know, puppies do that for me. Kittens and puppies. and even More than little human songs, to be honest. But anyway, yeah, they're fine. I mean, it's an instinctive, you know, part of our behavior, you know. If you... Unconditional love. I mean, that's probably the more real unconditional love. But like I said, it might not have been Yahweh or Jehovah or Allah. Might have been some, you know, other, maybe an unnamed deity. Maybe the only one, but nobody's known about it yet until they get there. I mean, why would some goat herders figure out about him? And we didn't without the words of those goat herders. Which you is think. really so you hard to wrap my head around as a human being, you, you know, now back in a human body. Most things are hard to wrap your brain around when you're a human being, at least for me. I mean, that's nice. That's fine. You know, I wouldn't want to take away whatever's making her happy. I'm just, this is my video, so, I mean, you know, we're going to be being critical. It's because... When I was out of my body during my NDE, I was stripped of ego. I was stripped of the limitations of my brain. I was stripped of the limitations of my body. Hey. And the light that I was in didn't have any of those limitations either. And so there was enough room for this complete, deep, unconditional, pure Love. Sounds wonderful. I had this realization that that is me also, oh, yeah. that I am that love, that we human beings, we are that love. Yeah, Every so soul is that love time. because we are one with that light as well. It's just when we come into our bodies and onto planet Earth, we get that what's perceived as a separation. A sep separation. Well, that's what religion does, unfortunately. What she went through did the opposite of what religion does. It was personal. I guess you can make religion personal, but it sure as shit isn't. It's, you know, it's cliques. It's um, tribes. I know. I went through it. I started my life that way. Didn't get off that crazy train till I was 23. It's just an illusion. And so as I was soaking up that love, I 
I realized that that's also who I am too and that I'm always one with that and that I had never been alone even though I felt alone never met times your friends. in my life that that light and that love had always been with me part of the peace that I experienced was that even though I had been in a tremendous amount of pain during the hours coming up to my near-death experience, I forgot about all of that pain once I was out of my body and in the light. And I know there's a big fear of death. And I also had a fear of death, of what would be next. And more a fear of dying, not death. I think death takes care of itself. And it's unavoidable. It's the dying part that might suck, you know. I mean, I'd rather die in my sleep than be than do it staked out on an anthill in the blazing sun. There's different ways. So yeah, that's the scary part. And it shouldn't really matter since it doesn't, I guess. Except to me. I think a lot of us too also have a fear of how we will die. Under those short we'll months. Will we have to go through a lot of pain or illness and a lot of the peace that I had once I was in the light was that whatever I had to go through in order to transition out of my body even though it was a lot of pain it wasn't even a thought at that point it sure. was just something that was in the background for found me. For this and so awesome. there's a lot of peace in knowing that death isn't the end. Sure. Life is just a chapter. And however we do ultimately transition out of our bodies, there's nothing but peace and love that waits for us on the other side. Nice. I did not want to go back into my body after that beautiful experience that I was having in the light. That was the only place I wanted to be. I heard the firm, the gentle and loving voice say, you need to go back. And I continued to protest. See, that's when I'd go, wait, first, I got some questions for you. She didn't ask any questions. I mean, I could have been at least told, no, not now. You know, but I would have tried to ask some questions, I think. I don't know, maybe I wouldn't in the moment, but I think I would. Because I always had too many questions, and they've always gotten me in trouble. Instead, uh, try to get my way and say that I wanted to stay longer. But I knew that it wasn't a negotiation. And yet, as I continued to protest, I felt myself get nudged, lovingly nudged back into the tunnel. Get back in your meat Very seat. quickly through the tunnel and then next thing I knew I was back into my body I re-entered my body through the top of my head that's convenient could have had to do it through your butt that would have, that would have been kind of disturbing <laughs> you know why not just you know whatever <laughs> and then I was fully in my body long enough for me to register that I was back in this world, that I was no longer in that white light. The pain quickly returned, and then I was unconscious for several hours. Okay, that's uh, that's a point I want to harp on. Yes. She came back too long as she's in the world. Well, she probably had all kinds of drugs. I mean, I hope so at that stage. She might even dream that being coming back into awakeness. Mind's working things out. Several hours later, a lot of time to have a dream. A lucid dream and not know if that it wasn't while well, that was, I mean, that it wasn't earlier. I mean, like I said, that and you need to see a toe tag or, you know, you know, death certificate or something. And they don't give me that here. You know, none of them do that. You know. So yeah. much later that evening. I eventually found out the next morning that I had a kidney stone that got stuck in my ureter. So all the toxins that typically are filtered out from your kidneys, all those toxins were going back into my bloodstream. 
and my entire bloodstream had become severely infected. My internal organs were infected, systematically shutting down, and I had gone into septic shock. I saw a couple of family members that looked very frightened, very concerned. Medical staff was there. My surgeon was there. And I wanted to tell everybody, don't worry. If I was supposed to die, if I was supposed to be dead. That'd be a nice time to find out that she had died or not. If I was supposed to die, if I had died, I don't think she died. But I think she was at death's doorstep, maybe. She was definitely in bad shape. I believe her. I do, too. I, you know, people could believe something, and maybe it was real to them, but it just ain't. Yeah, but let's see. I mean, like I said, I'm speaking for myself. I've had experiences that were like, did that just happen? I mean, even some normal experiences that seem surreal. You know, um, I remember almost hitting a bear across the road, running across the road. It's almost like a Bigfoot sighting, but unfortunately it was just a big black bear. But um, it was just like those Bigfoot sightings in that split second and so over and you're, you know, and I'm trying not to crash my car. And I didn't. But almost hit, almost hit a bear and I didn't have a, you know, dash cam, but I was thinking, did that just happen? Was that real? That, did, that wasn't real. It didn't seem real, but it was. This was the end for me. I would not have been sent back, but sent I wasn't back. able to do that. Honestly, it took several years to process a lot of what I really learned. Okay, that's interesting. Well, we all know that the more you revisit a dream, you kind of revise it a little, even unintentionally. I know about this. Uh, I've tried to uh, retrieve things that I forgot, and I can't trust any of that shit. You know, I mean, it was important to me, too, because, I mean, let's say I could have solved a really bad crime. I worked one night with a, well, a now famous sicko who killed people. I worked one night with him. I was replacing him. He was showing me the ropes and had all the clues. He said some things that were weird. And I talked myself out of it because it's like, why would he be here when no one's heard of this guy in a long time? But things he told me that night came home, came back to me over 20 years later when it's on the news about a DNA connection and it matched what he said. How would he know that? In like 82. Anyway, I couldn't remember his name anymore. I had an impression of his face, but I wasn't sure I could remember it. It was kind of superimposing other things. There were other things that had happened at that time. Some of them really crazy. Some of them even similar. I, I worked with a lot of creeps. I was, I was a rent-a-cop back then. And a lot of creeps walking around. At night getting paid for it. Anyhow, I could I thought I might have recalled the guy's name. I was gonna to try to call in, but I couldn't be sure of anything. And then I found out later and it's all pointless because I couldn't remember any of it. But the thing is, every time I tried to go into my memory to pull those things out, couldn't trust any of it. During my near-death experience and what I really learned when I was in that beautiful light and it was really the knowing that all is well when we're in our bodies the saying that all is well it doesn't make sense to us when we're here in our bodies we don't have a complete picture of what's happening we don't see all of the pieces that are going on yeah, and good. when we are out of our bodies when we're in the light, when we've transitioned out, and we are stripped of ego and the limitations of our brain and the limitations of our body, we have that 360-degree perspective. And when you have that 360-degree perspective, when you have the complete picture, 
when you see the complete picture. Saying that all is well makes perfect sense. Take your word for that. And that continues to bring me a lot of peace as I'm back in my body. You know, I'm really happy for her, actually. I gotta say, um, I like her, actually, uh, Jane. Um, I think she's sincere. I do think that this she's not lying. There's a quote that I love that always helps to keep me in that peaceful place of all is well and in the peaceful place of flow. And it's, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. I like that one. I think I'll use it. And there's so much truth to that. If we can just get out of our own way long enough to allow that to be. And so I was very motivated after my NDE to look at my trauma and to heal my trauma. And healing isn't always fun, but it's so worth it. Necessary. You want to stay broken, right? Heal thyself. Oh, I like that. I mean, it's true. Be authentic. It's a lot less work. So much work. You know, to put on an airs or a front or a character that you're not, or to tell stories that aren't true. I've met so many people like that, and you start learning to see through them after a while, and it's embarrassing. You're actually embarrassed for these people. And you lose respect for them. So, yeah, it's so much easier to just not put yourself through that. You don't have to keep track of shit. Just be authentic. Keep it real. You don't need religion for that, though. But I don't think this was really about religion, except maybe preconditioning religiously. I mean, had she been a different faith, she might have had similar experiences and attributed it differently. Although she didn't really say Jesus, God, or she just had a feeling and a voice. I respect that. And so you can experience the abundance and the love and the joy of really being in alignment with your soul's purpose. If we have one. Your trauma is is your clue for knowing where your healing is. And our trauma and our conditioning, it's what we learn from. And our parents and our caregivers, I truly believe that they did the best they could with what they had. It's taken me a while to be able to say that and truly believe that and to heal any resentments that I might carry with me. You only hurt yourself. Once you get there, there's a lot of peace in that too. And if we can all look at our traumas, look at our wounding, and do what we can to heal that, our holes will start to get filled back in. We also have to deal with... Uh your imagination with the, you know, amputees have phantom limb pain. Well, people with painful pasts have pains that they just imagine are still hurting them because they're letting them hurt them. And you can turn that shit off. You really can. It just takes takes time and it takes, um, you know, an active desire to be a better person, to be a better you. I mean... Believe me, that's been a quest most of my life. I've often felt that I wasn't good enough, that I was defective in some way. I needed fixing. As a matter of fact, I I, I meditated my navel with the, the Self-Realization Foundation. I read a lot of books, you know, the autobiography of Paramahansa Yogananda and Bhagavad Gita and read Dianetics. I was going to go check that out. And, and I was working in a restaurant back then. It was earlier. You know, and uh, like maybe 19. And a couple of people pulled me aside and begged me not to go there. Told me horror stories and saved me a lot of trouble. Money. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I went to that phase. I was searching for things. I was reading books about, I mean, Christianity and the occult and spirituality and... Everything trying to understand 
I'd been given a Quran. I read that. Then I felt guilty, and then I read the Bible because I thought, wait, I just read the whole Quran. And I had struggled through the, the, the Book of Mormon, but I actually did read it. And uh, I even read it on, on YouTube drunk, turned it into a drinking game. Although a lot of the videos have been pulled down, but there's most of it's there. But anyway, what I'm saying is I went on this spiritual journey. And the whole point was, is I was trying to stop those pains that were still paining me in my imagination. You know, insults, hurts, slights. You know, oh yeah, it just poisons you. You carry around your own, you're a toxic waste container until you decide not to be. And the wounds will be healed and we will start to feel complete here on earth so we can live out our you have true to be complete purpose. on your own. Where you are in each moment, that is your purpose. Okay. And there's a lot of peace in knowing that. Okay. If you're having a bad day or if you're having a good day, if you, you know, yelled at your kids that day, or if you had a great day with your kids that day, you are always in your soul's purpose because we are here to learn. We are not meant to be perfect we every be single learning. day. We should be learning. be about here. To fit the definition of here is the only place we are. Purpose. We're all learning. We're all evolving. We're all progressing along our path. And while we are here to learn, school is earth. The earth is school. My great grandmother used to tell me that life is a school and you don't graduate until you die. And it can often feel like the school of hard knocks. It's not all serious. Every school has a playground. So go out and find your playground and have some fun because it's not all meant to be serious. And we do need to lighten oh. things up sometimes. If you've ever watched a out. group of children on the playground, oh, you should be and one. they're trying to think of a game to play, they're inventing a game to Amazing play. Amazing how kids could do that. They have so many different sense. ideas, and they are bursting with excitement to start the game. But then if you look at a group of adults that got put on that same playground to invent a game, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think of everything that could go wrong in the game. And what will we do if that goes wrong? And what is the rule around this? And what are what's your role? And what's your role? That's very serious. And sometimes that's needed. But we can learn a lot from those children that are getting together as a group to have fun and to play a game and to just do what feels good. There's a lot of learning in that for us. We do all have a purpose in each day. We all have an ultimate purpose. And sometimes does. that purpose is just in being. Okay, I did that. You don't have to be doing, doing, doing all the time. Being is oftentimes all you need because it allows that flow. It keeps you from getting in the way all the time or the beauty that's trying to unfold in your life and the people's lives around you. I kind of dig that. You know, every once in a while, I think of it as a stillness, a quietude. I mean, sometimes I don't want music. I don't want anything. I want to go somewhere. And I got the woods right behind me, so that's nice. But um, I think that's really healing, you know? Uh Sometimes I'll be out there just working in my garden. I, when I start one this year, I'll be doing it again. Uh, that's zen. That is totally zen. Uh, I don't have to think too much about anything, really. Maybe I'm thinking, maybe I'm not. But, I mean, I don't always need some kind of outside stimuli. I don't need to be constantly playing music or hearing voices, talking stories. Sometimes I want to hear my own stories. And your soul and your intuition and your higher self is always there to guide you and to show you synchronicity. There's some truth to what she's saying. I mean, I've used coping skills a lot in my life because, uh, I mean, I, I had like Tourette's syndrome when I was a kid. I guess I still do, but it doesn't really show, I guess. Attention deficit disorder. 
eh, learning disabilities, uh, lots of things like that. So, I mean, I would um, imagine a higher self, although mine was like a bookkeeper and a file clerk, and there was like a universal library, I'd imagine. And I'd go send that guy to, for answers and then try to think about something else. And damn if you wouldn't wake up at two in the morning with the answer. And to open doors for you and to close doors that aren't meant for you. And just getting quiet enough and continuing to work on your healing Making so you decisions. can hear the wisdom of your intuition coming through. Your soul knows you. Your soul knows whether you're she going to you are, hear the message today or six months from now or six years from now. Your soul already knows. It's never going to rush you. All you need to do is just try to get quiet enough to listen. I like Jane Thompson. And um, she's the first NDE video I've done where I've actually liked the person. Um, I think she's sincere. I think this has helped her. Um, some of us don't have things like that, you know. I just, um, But maybe we have things similar, you know. I mean, I try to invent the, the rules that help me to make it through life. You know, of course, I mean, I'm 62 years old now, so I mean, it isn't that much of a problem since I retired early, and I can be zen now. just need to stop falling down and breaking parts of me. But anyway, I'm mending pretty good. And, um, yeah, let me know if you learned anything or if you have any thoughts about this. You know, you want to point some things out I miss, which would be fine. I don't mind. I mean, I never ask people to subscribe or like or send me money. All I ever ask is chime in if you want to. I don't block people. I haven't yet anyway. I, mean, I might have blocked somebody a long time ago, but that was a complete, you know, somebody filling up your comment pages with, you know, nothing, <laughs> you know, just to be a jerk. I mean, nobody likes jerks, but... I think I did it once, maybe, just once. And, yeah, I can take it. I got thick skin. Tell me if you have any ideas for videos. I, I'd like to do a few. I'd like to do some more. I can't really go out. I have to go down the stairs to get out of my house, so I've been in the house, except when I have somebody come around to help me down the stairs. Anyway, I got x-rays again on Wednesday. I'm supposed to have surgery, and I'm telling the guy, I'm, my pain level is like a three. And I can put weight on this foot pretty much. I just, they told me, that's not a good idea. But I'm like, what I'm saying is I couldn't before. I'd been healing pretty quick. Although the very day it's, it happened, I had some calcium gummies. And I've been taking them ever since. It's got to be helpful. And some turmeric. So anyhow, um, stay tuned. I promise I'll do another video soon. Anybody who cares. Um, peace. Fuck out. Yeah. Wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. You know I'm not bossy. I just wanted to be wonderful, that's all. Whatever it is. Bye.